Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bomber in Gordon. We have Dulai starting as the green Terran. Bottom left in corner, we have Fisheye starting as the yellow Protoss. This is on Vermeer, another macro-oriented four-player map, which I believe I'm going to favor Fisheye on. Just because it seems like when it's gone to the longer economic play, he's been the victor, where it's been more the short game, quick push play. It's where he's faltered. Dulife getting... I don't know if I want to say caught unawares. It just felt like he was a bit... I don't know what that rush was at the beginning. Maybe he was just indecisive with what he wanted to do and ended up overproducing Marines. Point being, didn't end up working out. So Fisheye able to take that economic lead and cap it all the way through the rest of the game. Although, I gotta say, there were some moments there with the Vulture clearing of some of the expansions that I thought Dulife was going to be able to sneak back into it. Regardless, Dulife on the edge of elimination. Fisheye on the edge of a round of four birth. Wallaby, thank you for the follow. Also, for everybody out in YouTube land who's watching this, first of all, a lot later than I actually casted it, typically. Usually like a week and a half, two week delay, depending. Still need to get the Hawk versus Artosis games up. Wanted to have like some fancy tags and things on it, but I haven't had time to do the Photoshop stuff. I do cast these live from 9.30 to 11 approximately. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Pacific Standard Time, that's PST. So if you guys want to catch these live and join the audience, where I get a lot of fun with the Twitch, where we have fun discussions, like where do, do Zerg poop? And is, I my theory is still, and this is where it's going to stand, where we're having the discussion. My theory is, is that Zerg poop is creep. 12 Nexus from Fisheye, so hold that thought. I like this play on this map in particular, also considering the difficulty Dulife had in previous match. Let's see if he gets first scout off. It looks like he's initially going to the upper right-hand corner. Fisheye actually going to go for a cross-positional scout initially. There are still three SCV on gas. We'll see if that remains the case. Fisheye, upon seeing that SCV, is going to reposition and come across Dulife's space bottom right. Dulife also seeing that probe come from that bottom left-hand corner is going to reposition and find that 12 Nexus double gateway as far as a follow-up. It looks like there is a single SCV out of this. He's going to be able to push that probe away. But now we're going to see Dulife's response. Is he just going to... So, finds the 12 Nexus. Does he move the SCV back in? Looks like he's just going... So, no. So, probably just going to go for a late grab on his command center and play at an economic disadvantage from here. Three gateway... Or, sorry, two gateways, seven X core. Halfway finished. Probe also waiting on the exterior for Fisheye. And so, is Dulite, you can just go for the initial Vulture. Yeah, and play from there. Moving out with the Marines already might be a bit of a risk. Clearing out at least that probe, trying to get on top of that probe scout. And the Zelt's going to get aggressive. That might be a little bit dangerous. See how Fisheye in response is actually going to move out and try to catch these Marines in open field that might leave them exposed to this initial Vulture, because Vultures can kill infinite Zelts with enough space. Moving out to the north and sweeping. Looks like it's gonna they're gonna miss each other. First Dragoons in production. Now the Zelt's gonna return home. And a bunker! Ugh. I'm not sure this bunker was necessary, and that's gonna cut into it's gonna be another economic cut here. Mines being upgraded, another vulture being produced. This vulture being intercepted by that dragoon in the nick of time. So Fisheye pulling off the 12 Nexus. Range about halfway finished. And also sending out an initial dragoon should be able to confirm the command center. At least there wasn't a fourth marine in production. For additional economic slowdown. But yeah, I don't know that this bunker was necessary. <clears throat> Considering the 12 Nexus position from Fisheye. 
Mines just about finished. <clears throat> Do life at least is going to be able to mine the third to potentially delay that. But with this economic grab from Do Life, reason I feel like some turn players they can just really roll their macro and make it work, which is where I wanted to see like the bunker skip or something along those lines. Cut a few corners to try to sneak back into the match. However, as things are playing out, it looks like Fisheye is going to have that economic lead, a tech lead, and do life not really in a position outside of just having vultures laying some mines here and there to apply any counter pressure on Fisheye whatsoever. Let's see if he's going to... Looks like he's got the mines complete. He's got vulture speed upgrading, skipping siege tanks, so maybe hoping that he can use the vultures in the mid game. It's kind of a light attack for us to get something accomplished. Second gas being grabbed from Fisheye. And tacking additional gateways. He Let's see if he plays Gateway Man from here, because I believe he can get away with it. Already with a bit of an economic lead. Vulture Speed finishing first Siege Tank out. But if Fisheye just slow plays this, gets his Observatory, moves out cautiously with the Dragoons, I just don't know that there's a lot that Do Life can do to slow him down or spawn from his current position. Second refinery up. Maybe he can do this. Dropship coming online. Full virtue. Uh, are they, they do have some mines. So we got two mines, three mines left. Probes wiped out. The dropship's moving to the north. There's a decent amount of vision along this northern corridor, but maybe a drop in the main could be the trick. Now, here's the thing. Do life one absolutely fantastic part of his play is his ability to clear out, just micro his vultures extremely well and get a magnificent amount of probe kills rapidly. Three Dragoons, however, are in position to intercept this dropship. I'm not sure if this is intentional by Fisheye or just a, kind of an afterthought. Observer making its way to the natural expansion as the dropship coming in. And the dropship, upon seeing those three Dragoons, just going to back right back out. And look at this. Fisheye, double Stargate. Is he going to go carriers off this? He does have the Citadel of Doom, but no Templar Archives as of yet. Vulture's going to go ahead and push back out. Observer going to see the two additional factories for do life all before those turrets are coming online and I assume from this double stargate and the lack of Templar archives that we are going to see nope never mind canceling that maybe just a mistake in the build order dropping the Templar archives now to go ahead move up to standard arbiter tech two base carrier would have been a little would have been a little aggressive and honestly would have surprised me Dropship exiting back out, just making sure that additional bases haven't been snuck anywhere out on the map. Fisheye wandering up. Clearing mines at that third. Going to go ahead and tack it down. Second armory. Actually, is that the first armory? First armory. No, there's the second armory. Plus one weapons coming online. Four factories, two machine shops, four do life. Worker count's actually even as things are playing out. Fisheye really... What if he's trying to play a little bit more reactive because it felt like he could have taken this third a little bit earlier, at least moved in position to do so. Maybe because of the accidental double stargate. Or I'm wondering if it was a, a conscious decision. He was a little bit concerned about the follow-up factor count and his ability to sneak up to carriers, losing a little bit of ground that way. Clearing mines across that 6 o'clock base. Do life just grabbing that command center on the ground upon feeling literally no pressure from Fisheye. So Fisheye got the 12 Nexus. But I don't know. It just feels like there's a little bit of lackadaisicalness here in the mid game. Just now getting is that fifth gateway online. 
Where it feels like Fisheye is, uh, or I should say Dewlife's not in that bad a position. So yeah, this Nexus is online, but Dewlife is evening the overall count. Supply is not that he's... Fisheye's got like a standard Protoss supply lead here. And Dewlife is running off six factories. And he's in good position with that, uh, with the double army if he can get them whirling to have the plus two weapons. Be in that plus two weapon position. Looks like a bunker there defensively. So he's just maybe just going to shell up, wait for the 200 200 and the upgrades before rolling out. Fisheye just kind of peeking out, but he's played a little bit cautiously here. Hasn't hate. I haven't seen any movements to going for the fourth base. He is going to have this Arbiter out sooner rather than later. I don't think recalls are as useful on this map just because it's a closer reinforcement point compared to other maps. But at the very least, Fisheye does see the uh, factories double comps that I think it catches yeah Arbiter Tech as it's coming online mines planted absolutely everywhere in other locations to maybe catch a probe as it was planting a base looks like that probe's going to sneak up to that nine o'clock just hover there also the Dragoon's going to sweep here take this mine out to the south so both players opting to macro up and do life I gotta say is actually in a superior macro position although finding Falling a little bit behind as far as the follow-up macro count. Fisheye with a 40 supply lead, which is actually significant, but this is still three base Protoss versus three base Terran, and usually that means Terran is ahead at even bases. And Dewlife is meandering out to go ahead and grab this three o'clock base as well. With these bridges, these are also very difficult and kind of these closed in locations. These are also very difficult locations to sail for Fisheye. Goliath's clearing out the observers behind this. So that 9 o'clock base is coming online, but the observer is going to see do life in position to go ahead and grab and match the base count. So despite being at a lower troop count, because of the map architecture on Vermeer in a very defensible three base location, I don't think Dewlife is all that concerned. Fisheye starting to move forward now. Has that 9 o'clock base in production. Still no movement, so there's an SEV, but yet no take yet at the 3 o'clock. Maybe he wants to make sure some vultures are have mined and cleared. And there's more siege shanks. Or maybe he just wants to wait for that plus 2 weapons. Dragoon's trying to clear the mines out to the upper left-hand corner. Some vultures... Sweeping Kraut's going to find some free Zealot kills. Zealots, it looks like they're just wandering out to go ahead and scoot things out. Now do life going ahead and grabbing that third. Two Zealots. Getting wiped out before they're really able to disrupt that. Single pylon. It's going to take a while to clear that upper left-hand corner. But both players, yeah, just going into macro mode. And do life. Yeah, I, I kind of like his spot here. Huge amount of vultures. Again, protecting that northern corridor. He's got... Let's see how many siege shank he's got out here. Siege shank count might be a little bit low, but I might just be missing their locations. Pretty well shelled up. Fisheye's now grabbing four bases. He's gone... Gateway Man. Does have an Arbiter out in the field. Waiting on that second Arbiter. Maybe going to go for a recall. Or, no, never mind. That's an Observer to the south. But now do life. Near 200 supply himself. As plus two weapons is coming online. Bullying forward. Fisheye holding that. This is what I wanted to see on Gladiator. Holding that upper spoke. And with those troops out of position. Looking to attack that three o'clock. Vultures and reinforcements sweeping back. To take out the Dragoons, it looks like four Dragoons has have slipped in to mix it up with the SCVs. So they're going to get a handful of SCV kills, but that army going to be completely wiped out otherwise. 
and Fisheye staying on top of the macro in the midst of all of this. Looks like he's also setting up for a potential refugee style. That cannon should be able to clear all those mines, but he's got those gateways coming online in the upper left-hand corner. So that if Dewlife does push forward and get him boxed in the bottom left-hand corner, he will be able to have potential two-prong attacks. Arbiter with potential recall energy being hunted down by that science vessel. Few Dragoons peeking through. Looks like that's going to chase that Arbiter off. Let's see if it goes for another angle. Vulture sweeping through. They actually might be able to get something done in the upper left. And Fisheye repositioning, but going to get swarmed by Dewlife's troops from the north. And right now, Fisheye, the way he's engaging this, looks like he's going to sweep out to the south with a bunch of zealots towards the third. While a lot of units were out of position, he might force a liftoff here from Dewlife. Dewlife able to clear out some zealots from that mineral line, and Fisheye going to go ahead and back out as Dewlife was looking to close the gap and pin the rest of those troops in. Fusel's able to get some additional SCV kills. Single Vulture wiped out, so these Zealots just gonna have a field day, but Dewlife chasing the rest of Fisheye's army all the way back to his third, and it looks like Dewlife is potentially gonna set up and just attack that third. But Dewlife being very negligent and not defending his own third expansion, huge stasis. At this army that was threatening the third natural expansion, that should be sufficient for Fisheye to go ahead and clear this out. So with that, the siege tank's getting wiped out. Actually, does he have enough? It doesn't look like he has enough. Looking for troops to reinforce from the north, but they're not coming. So do life, despite the stasis, is going to be able to press in to Fisheye's natural expansion. The stasis is coming offline. So do life all of a sudden with a death grip. I don't know that there's enough gate. So there were initial gateways, but I don't know if there's enough follow-up gateways for Fisheye to get sufficient troops to deal with this. And so now Fisheye in trouble because his natural expansion is sealed in. Some siege tanks to the north are steadily taking out that three o'clock base and a lot of his troops are boxed in to be able to deal with this where's the arbiter is there going to be a recall over this or a stasis a stasis only catching a science vessel another good stasis catching a handful of goliaths but it doesn't look like is this going to be a sufficient attack force to clear what's there and it looks like no Fisheye being backed out once again into his natural expansion. Siege tanks continuing to work on that nexus. At the 8 o'clock position, we have two Arbiters to the south that have plenty of energy that might be able to join this attack force. And right now, Fisheye kind of flubbing this. And do life reinforcing. Here's the thing, though. If Fisheye can break out of this, he'll be in good position because he still has got a lot. He's got plenty of bases to work with. Do life while he's got this breathing room going ahead and expanding the upper right hand corner. The Nexus now slowly falling to this siege tank. Level 3 weapons, level 2 armor online. Wondering if. And a recall from Fisheye at the 3 o'clock location, wanting to draw troops back. I don't know that this is going to be sufficient, though. So rather than a recall to try to open up the natural fisheye trying to recall at the 3 o'clock, do life quickly wiping that out. Although he's still, again, leaving his zealot to go ahead and feast on SCVs there. An EMP catching one of the Arbiters. And fisheye's botching this. Behind do life's supply count all of a sudden. 
He was in fantastic position. It looks like a single zealot did get to the north, but not before that siege tank was able to take out that nexus at the 9 o'clock. Dulife has an additional base in the upper right-hand corner. All of a sudden, he has a cap on that natural expansion, a 40 supply lead. And is mining effectively on, I want to say this is like three and a half bases. To Fish Eyes 3, so he's got the economic lead as well. Fish Eye now attacking this army head on. Science Vessel is there to provide detection. Zealot streaming across. And yeah, Do Life holds. Fish Eye calling GG. Fish Eye was in great position multiple times in this match. Kind of flubbing it. So we're going to go to set five, or game five of this set. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.